So as you can see, we're doing pressure testing again. It's not a problem. We had a problem, we found the problem, and we're tweaking it. So the engine had a bit of a misfire. A bit of coughing. It was running, but it was a bit missy. I was like, okay, there's a bit of timing, plugs, something like that, dizzy cap, whatnot. So check for all that, we all got spark everywhere. <clears throat> you can adjust the distributor and the engine speeds up, slows down. Adjusting the idle level, but it was still missing the idle. Um, so lots of head scratching, um, bits and bobs. Dialed down to, right, I haven't, last time I adjusted the fuel in was on the old um, airbox meter and head. So I went back to that. But before I did that, the engine was running, so I pulled number four HT lead off. The engine cut off, good. Put it back on, started it up, pulled number three off, cut off, good. Put it back on, started it up, pulled number two off, no change. So I left number two off and pulled number one off as well. No change, so I shut the engine off pretty quickly. So the engine was running on two cylinders, which isn't really good because it puts a bit of undue stress on crank and stuff, but no, it was not like I've been driving around for ages on it, so we're not really worried. So we got cylinders one and two are not firing. For some reason so HD leads out put a plug in it yeah I've got spark on it took the actual plugs out still got spark so right I've got spark everywhere so then we go back to fueling so tested the fueling I didn't even test it at max I just had it sort of halfway um, a rough idle position it's very hard to find the idle position on there because you obviously you can't see it max is easy max if I can open it again so that's max that's pretty easy to work out, but idle, you, you don't know, is sort of a guessing game. So I had it sort of roughly idle where I thought it would be. Um, and my readings came back on the fuel injectors at 95 millilitres, 80 millilitres, 70 and 120. So they were well off, um, which is why that's going to be a misfire, causing a misfire there, going from that much fuel to that much. Horrible mess. So I've readjusted it all, and this is where we are. So max fuel, and we've got a little bit more than book book figures, which is ideal because the KJ has got a habit of running lean, high RPM. So after 27 tests, I actually did or adjustments and testing, adjustments testing. I've got 85 milliliters, 85, 82.5, and 85. So that gives us a 2.5 mil difference, and we're allowed 8 milliliters. So full whack, rappy, smiley face. Idle is a different story. Now the only place. I worked out idle is close as what I read in the manual the special tool is set to a point where the injectors to start opening which is quite hard to sort of guesstimate um, and as I said I used a 1.4 millimeters of the feeler gauge in the sort of two o'clock position on the um, metering head and that gave us these figures 20 30 45 and 22.5 so we've got a 25 millimeter difference when we only really want a three milliliter difference. So idle is, yeah, um, not the best. It's closer than it was. But the thing is, if I readjust all that idle to get them bang on three mil difference, you then run it at max and they're all out. So this is where K-Jet sort of falls down a little bit. You can't precisely have X amount of fuel, because, like an electronic injection. So what we've done, we've tweaked it again. This is what we're left with, max. The engine's not going to be sitting at idle for ages. And like I say, it's very hard to get the idle measurements because for starters, I don't know where the air plate should be when it's idling. And I haven't had the engine running, well, I have, um, the CO2 mixture. So we've got the CO2 mixture screw sitting down there. I haven't had the chance and I haven't got a meter yet to adjust that. So the idle fuel injectors are going to be adjusted anyway by means of adjusting that screw because when you adjust the screw that sits in that hole in there when you adjust that that adjusts how much that air plate moves that pin so I'm not going to chase around trying to get the idles close when when we do the actual you know final setting up the tweaking with the co2 the co2 adjustment will change all that change the idle position so as again, it's a performance vehicle. What we want is, we know the fuel system's good. It's kicking out enough fuel. We want a bit more, which is good. Um, again, it's not worth trying to get down to 20. It should be 20 milliliters over two minutes. So one or four, fine, yeah, no problem with that. Three and four are quite high. But again, if I adjust four down, you're not adjusting 
sorry, if I adjust cylinder three, I'm not just adjusting cylinder three. If I adjust cylinder three, it'll have effect on four, two, and one. Um, so we're gonna leave it as it is for there. We're happy with the max fuel in. We're all even. The in uh, injectors are kicking out. Is even what they should do. So we can put everything back together, start it up, and see if that's cured our misfire. So we're in pieces again. No problems, but. We've got to the bottom of our problem, what we think it is, is the actual injectors themselves. So everything else is new, it's all tested, the injectors are at full throttle, flowing out what they can want to do, which is good. All vacuum pipes are done, all hoses are clamped up, there's no air leaks anywhere. Um, it still idles, pretty rubbish. Like you rev it above 2000 RPM, the engine's singing its song, it's beautiful. Idle, just doesn't want to idle. It will idle, but rough and horrible. Um, so the only thing you can do is really the injectors are at fault, whether it's one of them not opening enough or not opening at all, or one's dribbling with a bit of pressure or something, um, and it's just not catching. Because when it's running, idling, I can pull off each spark plug individually and it affects the engine. So it is firing, just not efficiently. So we need a new set of injectors. Now, what we're gonna do, or what we are doing, is buying a the Mercedes um, injectors, quite a common thing you can do, it's a brass injector, same difference, still opens at three, between 3.2 and 3.4 bar, no difference really, um, the only difference is cost, um, these are four injectors for this, are 72 quid to the door, genuine Bosch ones, brass ones, so they shouldn't, less resistance to corrosion, if I wanted the steel ones with the top hats as, as are fitted or what I've taken off, I'm looking not far or double that price, so just not worth it so they're in order so they'll turn up once they turn up um i'll start the next video with fitting those injectors and then uh, seeing if that sorts the idle out what i'm gonna do now is cut one of the injectors apart to actually see what's inside it so bear with me with that and i'll show you that also before i forget um which i have done what was i going to say um mine's gone blank what was i going to say um uh, yeah, injectors. Right, obviously in the previous video I've done the air shrouding. Um, if you haven't looked, go back in the video to see the air shrouding. Now the only difference with the Bosch injectors and the new ones is the new ones, Mercedes ones even, these have got your top hats on, so that's your top hat for the air shrouding. The brass ones do not come with that. Now you can take these off, very hard to get them off, and put them on the new injectors, but these are put on from the factory, designed. So I'm not going to try and pull these off because you'll distort that metal in some form and then put it on a new injector and then at some point that falls inside the engine. So all we've got to do, if you've got air shroud and it's fine, it, it's designed to make a difference but in the real world you probably wouldn't notice it. Um, obviously I wanted to keep the air shroud in but obviously now we've got to change the injectors so I'm not going to pay out double the price just to have the air shroud in when it, in the real world it wouldn't notice a difference. So I'm not going to take those back out. They're going to stay in there. The only thing I have to do is fit the normal injectors. You've got the normal top seal, which is fine, but there's no bottom seal to worry about. So all you've got to do is this T-piece that goes up the inlet manifold. And just pull it off. Come here. There we go. So that's the bit that goes up inside there, goes on a nip on the bottom of the inlet manifold. That's the part which which brings the air across for the air shrouding. So all you've got to do is block that nipple up. So all I'm going to do is cut that in half, put a solid tube inside of it, put it back on, um, glue the pipe together. So it will go on there, it will look normal, but it will be blocked up. So no air from that side can be drawn in and no air from that side is going to be drawn in. So that's what we do with that. So right, I'll get on now with cutting the injector part and see what's inside one. So all I'm going to do now is remove the top hat which supposedly pop on and pop off. There we go. That's your top hat pressed on part, not on there. I mean, I could put it on the new injectors, but I don't want that falling in the engine. And I think the other injectors 
or slightly longer or whatnot, but we'll see when we get it. But that's the top hat, and that's a normal injector as it is on the end. As you can see from the inside of that injector, the top hat removed. Pretty dirty inside there, which isn't going to help fuel delivery. So, top part of the injector cut off where the thread goes, and then obviously that's the seal clip. Then we've also got another bit of cut off because I don't exactly know where the injector parts were. So, there's three parts of that, and then that bit is where it just starts to go into the injector portion. And obviously we've got the top hat down there and then the last bit this is where the governs are just got to the filter in there and these, these can't really be cleaned so what I've done is just cut gently around it to pull that side off and that's part of the barrel of the injector and you can see straight through it and then this is the filter obviously it's a bit mangled because I've been trying to get it out Lastly, this field was 30 years old, so the zoom that just sits in the edge of that. So that's part of the filter. And there's still more in there, and I think these are pressed in from the end. So what I'm going to do is just cut around that line and hopefully we can get the end of it out to see what we're looking at. So we've cut around the edge, the end, so you can just see these when they're built are pressed in from this end. Um, so to take that one last little bit off, um, hopefully we should be able to pull the inside out and just see the inside of the injector. I know I've seen pictures of it, I need to do this anyway. So. No, oh, that's that. Get to push it out from that side. It's a filter breather. So, there we go. That's the, the silver ring in the back of there, that's the filter is. So you've literally got, that's the injector there, top hat, spring sits there. So yeah, you've only got where that dot is. The actual injector part is literally that section there. So you've got the injector itself, that's the actual spring and nozzle that sit in pretty much in the top hat region. So all that pretty much down to there, it's just one orifice pressed in the end. Um, can we see anything wrong with it? Um, not with my eyes I can't, but I'll take some pictures so you can see a close up at the end. That little nozzle in there, can't see it well. That bit that's coming up, that's a nozzle. If that doesn't seat properly on the side, it's not going to hold. And if that spring's weak, it's not going to work. If the filter's blocked, again, I mean, it didn't look too good. That filter's got a lot of rust in it, contaminants. So, yeah, it's safe to say we'll get these changed. Well, I need to know because I've got my part. But there we go, that's the inside of an injector, so I'll take some good detailed pictures of these so we can see and then uh, catch you back when we've got some new injectors turning up. And here is what you're looking at, this is the actual injection parts, the only bit that works, so you've got your seat, that's your actual needle pin tool, that must be some sort of shim to regulate the pressure on the spring, and that's just your retainer. So there's tiny little bits, and you only need a bit of, like your valves get carboned up, a bit on there, between that surface, and it won't seal, or that spring gets a bit weak, and it opens too early. So 
There we go, that's the inside of a KJ injector.